the end of the last video, I found the maximum rates that I can get the rocket magazine to spin inside the launcher. <laughs> it spins so fast. Since then, I finished the next two tests that are necessary to get this thing to rotate to its firing position. It's not just magically gonna turn exactly 180 degrees every time. So those tests that I did got me the numbers that I needed to plug into the final code. And then with a little bit of tuning, it's all ready to go. When I start this bad boy up, it does exactly what it does in the game. If you look carefully, as Master Chief pulls up the rocket launcher, you can see the barrels are indexing to the firing position. This does the same thing. If the barrels are out of alignment, they need to move to the firing position. So it automatically automatically indexes by turning to the left to the very first index position where it can fire. The launcher can find its exact position because of this limit switch. When the cylinder rotates, there's a limit lump that comes down and pushes that switch. And when it comes off of that switch and it's released, it knows it's in the right position, which is extremely important for all of the functions that this launcher has. Like when I reload this thing, because there's no way I'm gonna put it in in the exact right position every time when it gets reloaded. In the game, Master Chief always does because it's a game and it's fake, but this is real life and that's not gonna happen. So it needs to index. The tubes don't spin when I pull the trigger in. The tubes spin when I release the trigger because I don't want a rocket trying to leave the tubes while this thing is spinning around. So when you pull the trigger in, the rocket leaves and after it's left, you release the trigger and it goes to the second barrel. My favorite feature of this launcher besides it shooting rockets is the self-test button. In the Halo games, if you don't mess with the controller for an amount of time, you do a static animation. In Halo 1, 2, and 3, when you have the spanker out, the static animation is that the launch magazine re-indexes to the firing positions. In Halo 1, it's a little weird. In Halo 3, it just flips over twice. But in Halo 2, it has a really cool back and forth re-indexing procedure that it does. But this is the launcher from Halo Infinite. There is no animation for when you sit still, but there is a button on it that says self-test right above it. So. I'm going to put that button on this and it's going to do what it did in Halo 2. And when it does that, it's actually functional. It's re-indexing to the firing positions based on the limit switch. How cool is that? Since this is an actual rocket launcher, we did include one safety feature. If it's moving during any of the functions at all and the lid gets knocked open or comes off, there's two limit switches up there that kill any motion that's happening. But as soon as it's shut again, it re-indexes and it's ready to go. Now that this phase of the project is finished, I can get rid of the computer for testing and switch this over from the test wiring to the final wiring. That way I can permanently install it and get on with the build. I'm extremely proud of this project at this point. It's turning out far better than I expected it would, but I can't take all the credit for it because my buddy Hartley put in a lot of time and effort writing the 800 lines of code that make this thing work flawlessly every time. So huge thank you to Hartley for helping make my spanker dreams come true. These panels here cover the center section of the launcher. They were time consuming to build because I did them by hand because I didn't have a plan for how I was gonna do them. So it was a lot of scoring, snapping, careful measurements, gluing, and putting them together but they're 90% done and they're ready to go on. Also, I forgot that I already started the finishing work by laser engraving the markings on the launcher with this little laser engraver that a friend gave me for free. We didn't film it because I didn't know if this having an open housing would burn out the sensor on the camera. If you know if that's a problem or not, let me know. Even though these panels are very close to finished, they still do not look very good. With these big projects, you might put a lot of work into something that doesn't look good, but sometimes if you just put that little 10% extra effort in, you can turn something that's Eh, into something that's really awesome. So now it's time to make these look really awesome. These look really cool. Almost look like metal. 
huge transformation from boxy white plastic, but they're not finished. They're close, but they're not the right color. So I need to work on everything else first and get everything ready so that I can do a special paint mix to tint everything to the right color and I'll do it all at once. That way I don't have to mix multiple batches of paint. I have a huge amount of very large, very poorly printed 3D parts that I made that I need to finish. But luckily I have a secret because otherwise this part would take a month. And that is called two part primer, which is what's on the center cylinder section here right now. Instead of normal spray paint that comes out and it's one part, you mix something that cures the paint into the paint and then you spray it out of an HVLP gun and it builds up very quickly. One heavy wet coat is enough to completely hide layer lines on a 3D print. And this stuff cures in 20 minutes if you warm it up and it sands very easily. So it's gonna make this process go a lot faster. It's still a lot of parts that are very large. This process is still going to be days of work, but not a month. Here we go. All of the parts are finally finished and I'm very excited about this project and it seems like a lot of you are too. And I didn't want to start cutting corners now. I wanted this to be good. So I kept adding 10% and it ended up taking a little bit longer than I thought it would. I ended up priming and sanding back all of the 3D printed parts to hide as many layer lines as I could. And then I painted all of them various metal colors. Some of which I mixed a very small amount of black paint with clear paint to tint them darker so they'd be more accurate to the colors in game. Then I used my vinyl cutter to create all of the details that go on the parts, and I applied those. And then just like how a rug can really tie a room together, I coated all of these with a two-part flat clear coat to tie them together. And that also helps to lock on the vinyl decals. There is no way for me to convey how excited I am to put this together right now. From two months ago when I started designing these parts in CAD, to coming up with the systems that'll make this thing function, to now, where in a couple hours I'm gonna put this together and have an accurate, real-life spanker from Halo. And, I have a secret. I built an awesome Easter egg into this project that you haven't seen at all yet. It's probably my favorite part of the project now. And as soon as I get all of these parts put together, I'm gonna to reveal that special feature to you. And I think you'll agree that it really puts this project over the top. Everything is put on, all that's left is to put the launch tubes in. <laughs> all right, this thing's too big. I'm here to get a better look at it. All right, I'm gonna take a better look. <laughs> it really did come together, you know? That handle needs its cover put on but I couldn't do that until all the other parts were installed to get the clearances right for it. But with all of the rest of this fully assembled and nearly complete, it truly looks incredible. And with all the different stages of the build and all the different things you have to do, you start to forget everything that it took to make it. And it makes me feel like I almost wasn't the one that built this, especially because it looks so accurate. It feels like I just reached in and pulled it out from the game. Projects of this scale are only possible because of the supporters of this channel. Because without the support of my Patreon members, this project would not have happened. 
And that might sound cliche, but it is 100% true. So in effect, they built this project as much as I did. Cool thing about this project is I made lots of digital files to create this launcher. And as always, I'm making those files available to my Patreon members. But this project isn't over yet. Not only do I have to do the reload handle and the ignition contact system on the launcher, but I also need to do the rockets, which are basically a project by themselves. So if you still wanna help with this project and have access to the files, link to join my Patreon support group will be in the description. Now it's time for the super secret special feature Easter egg. There's a secret button right there. When I press that button, it activates a section of the code that tells the stepper motor to take steps at different rates, and that emulates notes. So essentially, this is a musical rocket launcher. And what could be better than a musical rocket launcher? How about a musical rocket launcher in a cave? Which is why we're taking this to Black Coffee Caverns, and they've graciously agreed to let us take this deep into the bowels of the earth to a huge natural cathedral for an epic rocket launcher rendition of the Halo theme song. Banker. Man, that looks really cool. <laughs> 